Well, they found a skeleton of a young woman, a uh, poor building a road in Houghton, Western Minnesota, back in the 1940s. They called up the, uh, it didn't look like she died recently, so they called up the state anthropologist to come out and take a look. A guy by the name of Jinx, fraternity brother of mine, turns out, an uh, older man than I, but uh, I knew him. And they called up the San Francisco Jinx, he was an economist who had an interest in anthropology and started the anthropology department at the University of Minnesota. So they call him up, he drives out in his pickup truck. There's a skeleton, he'd been doing gardening, and he digs around and where the skeleton came out of this uh, gravel and and uh, finds uh, some artifacts, throws them in the skeleton and artifacts back to the pickup truck, drives back to the cities. The uh, artifacts were, uh, the, the skeleton of the young woman, they discerned that she was about 15 years old, her pelvis had not been stretched and so she had not had any kids. Um, and they did radiocarbon dating on the skeleton about 10,000 years ago. Fourfold of skeleton and, and uh, time-wise in, in North or South America. Maybe the fifth oldest now. There's been a recent discovery, but three, and the oldest skeleton of a woman, although they called her Minnesota Man. But the oldest skeleton of a woman uh, by many thousands of years uh, found in uh, in North America. Anyhow, they found with the skeleton uh, a, a knife about a foot long with sharp at the end that made out of an elk horn. This was a weapon, this was not the butter you're bred with. But she had a weapon with her, she had a Blanding's turtle shell uh, with full pollen. So she must have been a medicine woman. And she had a, a conch shell, which the anthropologist, I guy really was, described as a pendant. The thing was about a little bit smaller than what I got here. This is not a pendant hanging from your neck on a string or a cord. It would not be what you do, but you'd hang it from your belt. Um, this intrigued me. I was trying. I studied anthropology at the university, but it wasn't really until about four or five years ago I remembered the monograph, and, I, and it intrigued me because of a conch shell. Well, the conch shell was preserved up in uh, Alexandria, Minnesota, at the museum. It's in a, in a skeleton too. So I drive up there and I uh, look at the, the conch shell. I didn't take it out of the case. I didn't have to because the tip of the conch shell went cut off. It didn't curl out, cut off like that. Why would you do such a thing? I'm about to make uh, this. <coughs> musical instrument. Or you can modify it. <coughs> play blues with this thing. Well, she probably didn't play blues after 10,000 years ago. What was she doing? Well, this was in the days when the wall of ice that had covered North America was retreating, and they probably were living maybe 100 miles away from the end of the glacier, the big glacier. Maybe not, maybe not even that far. Uh, she drowned in what they call Glacial Lake Pelican, which is part of Glacial Lake Agassiz, which covered most of Minnesota, North Minnesota, and, and the Dakotas. She drowned in a, 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 that lake, Great Pelican Lake Pelican, associated with Glacial Lake Agassiz. Uh, but what was she doing with this, this, this conch shell? Well, there's something else she knew with a conch shell besides play the blues. You can go. <coughs>
songwriter and they always say, elephant, most always. They say, elephant, and I say, all right. There were elephants in North America, we call them mammoths. And in Africa and India, they have conch shells and they have elephants, and if you can hunt the elephant, you go out with a conch shell, and it becomes an elephant collar, like a moose collar, a duck collar, or whatever. It calls the bull elephant that come out, not the head of the elephant of the herd, but the one that's second in command, usually, or, 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 or other rogue elephants, they say, to come out and fight you. Now, elephants, we assume that mammoths, herds were organized like the elephants in Africa and India. Mammoths are just elephants with got fur. Um, which means if there's danger, the, the young ones get in the middle, the moms get in a circle around them. The, the daddy of a big uh, bull elephant who thinks he's the daddy of all the young elephants, probably not, but thinks he is, he prances around by way of danger. And all the rogue elephants, the male elephants that have been chased away by this guy, but don't, are not part of a herd, they're the ones that should call to fight. Because it's a fighting call, you blow this, they're going to come and fight you. And especially if they find that you're a 15 year old girl, they'll probably trample you right into the ground. But on its way to trample you, there's your daddy, then his brothers, or his uh, brothers in law, and they got spears. And you try to put yourself, if you're a girl that's got the trumpet, the elephant collar, with a swamp between you and where the elephant's going to come from. So when it comes against getting mired down in the swamp, the guys pop up with their spears, they got these spear floors, they whip those spears into the elephant, they can't get far enough to, to make it, to, to kill it, but you can get in there and the, the point, the clovis point stays and the shaft of the spear slides out and they bleed to death. So it takes a while to get one of those elephants, but they do. In the meantime, she is safe because the guys distracted the elephant from her with her nicely sharp spears. So what I figure is she died in the glacial lake on the shore, just off the of, just off the of shore. And what she was probably doing it was winter time or spring. There's a marsh. Archaeologists discovered by digging around in this glacial uh, debris. There's a marsh there that had been there between the shoreline and and the main and the regular land. And I suppose the guys figured that this elephant was going to come. Mammoth was going to come get marred, marred down in the swamp and they could kill it. But maybe the swamp was frozen. Maybe the elephant was stronger than they expected. They ran out of the ice, broke, ice broke, and they both dropped. It raises some interesting questions. Because this is a detective story. Uh, how'd she get the conch shell? They come with this conch shell that she had that came from the Gulf of Mexico. The only place that it grows is off, of, off Tampa Bay, Florida. It's a long ways from western Minnesota. And this is the days when the glaciers were melting. You have these torrents of water coming by, and you're still just going to casually walk up, you know, up to, you know, it's a hard journey to get up here. There had a lot of trade going on between uh, the mammoth hunters and the folks farther south that, that had the conch shells. And it was perfect conch shell, no barnacles. Barnacles are a little gross that come on conch shells. If the conch shell's got barnacles, it doesn't make a sound. And so it had to be perfect. Somebody had to, had to dive in the water, get that cup, show, bring it up, clean it out, and uh, use UPS or whatever to get it up here. Somehow I got up to Minnesota. But the more interesting question is, did every roving band of mammoth hunters have a young woman that had a conch shell to call the elephants so that their family could kill the elephant and, and, uh, and live another month? before we had to go and kill another elephant and live off of it. 
We don't know the answers, of course. In monographs, the papers about um, uh, more recent deaths than 10,000 years ago, they find mention of seashells, fragments of them. Well, what do they count shells? Huh? Anthropologists are not, are not really well acquainted with seashells. It's not the ones in Minnesota. So we don't know. We don't know what she was doing. But we do know that 10,000 years ago, a young woman died with a conch shawl. And maybe she was a mammoth dollar. And 